And this is not what I was expecting at all. We're over at the Toyota newsroom and coming soon, first ever Lexus TX. This is the first time they've officially revealed the name for the Lexus TX. We've known about it for about a year through Patton. We have the TX 350, 500H, and 550H+. Plus. We'll go over the powertrains here in a little bit. But let's check out this teaser image of the Lexus TX. It shares a lot with the Grand Highlander. Uh, and I'm just gonna download a high resolution of this. All right, so checking it out, we have chrome window trim at the top, and check how the, uh, the shark thin uh, roof antenna uh, is blacked out. It looks like the roof rails are blacked out as well. Um, we also have paint matched uh, wheel arch surround here. These are the same door handles we have on the NX RX R RZ, and I am getting the RZ today. Uh, for a full week to re review for you guys. I drove it out in California, but I'm excited to have it in uh, my driveway to test out. So what we're gonna do, there's some stuff going down here, like a rear diffuser that I wanna brighten up. Not really, we just know we have a lot of black uh, glossy cladding here at the bottom, it looks like. We're gonna wrap around taillights, and these look super similar to what we have on the RZ, for example. These could be 22 inch wheels. Uh, I know that the, the new TX will have 22 inch wheels, at least in the F-Sport performance package. We also have a rear windshield wiper back here, unlike the RX that tucks it in over here. So uh, we also have this floating roof line. Let me know what you guys think of this blacked out D pillar back here uh, and this window, top window trim, roof line trim that kind of accentuates a straight line. Uh, let me know what you guys, we also have a little L motif. I mean, you guys see this check mark here, that little Nike swoosh, that's very Lexus of them to include that there. I mean, this back door looks huge and I think I'm going to overlay a Grand Highlander image for you guys so you get an idea of the dimensions of this. So here's a Grand Highlander here. Expect the dimensions to be nearly identical. And honestly, I'm liking the D-pillar area here that is all paint matched instead of this fake floating roof line. What do you guys think? Also, the window line is different here. The TX window in the back has its own unique shape, which we don't see. I mean, we, we also see that, let's say, in the difference between uh, the Land Cruiser and the Lexus LX. Uh, so it, it is kind of par for course for Toyota and Lexus to, to do that, to change the window lines on their premium vehicles. But you can just see the door is uh, identical here, at least in regards to the dimensions of <clears throat> these windows and just overall the door design. On the Grand Highlander, we don't have uh, paint match wheel arches, for example. So that's one way this looks a little bit more upscale. And just let me know, guys. Like, I, it's hard for me to get over that we have paint matched here, and then you have glossy black for this floating roof line effect. Now, it might look different when I see the whole picture zoomed out, like I see the Grand Highlander. I really like the looks of the Grand Highlander. I think it looks like a big RAV4 mixed with Sequoia in some ways. It looks awesome. I think it looks great for a three row crossover, very Toyota, very macho at the same time, but also minimal styling. The closest image that we have of the TX is what was teased at the end of 2021 by Akio Toyota. And I like the front end of this. I would be happy if it comes to the market looking like this. And you know, the writing was on the wall with this D pillar as well, back in late 2021 with this floating roof line. I just didn't pick it up until now, comparing it against the Grand Highlander. So expect the, this front end to be very, very similar. And we have a little air dam here at the bottom, which reminds me a lot of, let's say, the, the new Prius, for example. And even this grill portion here, this next generation hammerhead design, even though it's a Lexus, it still has that uh, carried over from the Toyota DNA as well. And if even if we look at the wheel design, I know we don't have the full wheel here, but it looks like the design for the wheel was finalized in late 2021 as well. So expect the TX to look very, very similar to what we have right here, uh, if not identical. Heading back to the press room, something big is coming, introducing the first ever TX coming soon, hashtag Alexis TX. This is something Lexus has needed in their lineup for a very, 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 very long time. Really since Acura came out with the MDX, Lexus should have responded quickly by having a unibody three row cross over. The Lexus LX and the Lexus GX both have three rows. The problem is their body on frame, they're very rigid. And since they're international models, they couldn't make it too big and accommodating to compete against like the Tahoe's out there as well as like uh, the, the MDX, for example. And then they're, it's better like what, 15, 20 years late than never. So it's great to have the Lexus TX finally coming. It's time to talk about powertrains because we know what's going to be in here. Uh, and 350 is 
is going to be the base model. And I say we know because it has been trademarked. So unless they did some additional sneaky trademarks, I don't expect anything other than what we're going to detail here. So TX350, 2.4 liter turbo, 275 horsepower, 317 pound feet of torque, eight speed automatic, front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Isn't it interesting that Mazda, not a luxury brand, offers all wheel drive standard on all their crossovers and Lexus does not. Just want to throw that out there. 350H, is this coming? The 250-ish horsepower hybrid setup with a naturally aspirated four-cylinder that we see on the NX, RX, uh, Sienna. Uh, we'll see it in the Grand Highlander. I don't think it's coming from my sources. They say this is not going to be an option for the Lexus TX, which is unfortunate in my opinion because it is smooth, it's efficient, and decent enough power. But if you're trying to be a more luxury mainstay, you got to have powerful powertrains. I get it. But here's the thing. This powertrain isn't really any less powerful than what we have on the 2.4 liter turbo, uh, but it gets you like double the fuel economy. So rest in peace, the idea of a TX of 35 miles per gallon. Instead, the entry level hybrid will be the 500H. I don't know if the 500H will be the F-Sport performance, although if they'll say that for the next powertrain we'll talk about here in a little bit, but it comes with a six-speed auto. It's pretty smooth. It's, it's kind of fun to row through the gears on this, unlike the 350H powertrain, which doesn't have any true physical gears with the ECVT. 366 horsepower, 406 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60 should be around six seconds, maybe a little bit faster. I just test drove this in the RX 500H. It's pretty satisfying, to be honest. Um, and I was able to get at times like 25 to 30 miles per gallon with it. Expect maybe 20 to 25 miles per gallon on this larger vehicle with the 500H. Now, plug-in hybrid is coming for the TX 550H+. Plus. It is reviving the V6 from what I'm hearing. Not the not using the 2.4 liter turbocharged engine. I like the simplicity of the V6 here as well. And I think it was an easy plug and play for Lexus because you got to remember the outgoing 450H, not the 450H plus that we've seen the NX and RX and other markets, but the 450H hybrid that was the hybrid system for the RX. It was built here in North America and Canada, for example, had the V6. It had 308 horsepower, if I remember right. And it was very smooth and maybe got around 30 miles per gallon if you're lucky. But they're going to be using that same setup probably with the same motors up front. What changes drastically between this 550H Plus and the old 450H for the RX is the E-axle on the back. You're going from a 54 horsepower motor in the rear to power the rear wheels to a 100 plus horsepower motor around 80 kilowatts and we'll have 124 pound feet of torque. So the benefit here is that in fully electric mode, when you top off the battery, you plug it in overnight, this 18.1 kilowatt hour battery, you'll get over 30 miles of range, but you'll probably have somewhere between 200 to 250 horsepower of just pure electric propulsion, which is going to be amazing. It's going to drive very much like an electric car. Um, and you're just going to have the addition of the V6 for more performance and to curb range anxiety if you're taking it on road trips. So very, very excited for this. It will only be available at low volume and it will be by far the most expensive plug-in hybrid in the Lexus lineup when it debuts. Now, what about its competitors for the 550H setup? It is going to be interesting because I just reviewed the Mazda CX-90 plug, uh, not the plug-in hybrid, but the standard one, the 3.3 liter. And the 3.3 liter should have no problem complete competing with the uh, TX 500H with the Turbo S trim and also the TX 350 with the non-turbo S trim still gives you the 3.3 liter turbo mild hybrid and gets you pretty good fuel economy as well. So man, uh, Mazda is going to be climbing into that premium segment with the rear wheel drive biased all wheel drive platform with the plug-in hybrid available with the inline six available and it coming in at much lower prices despite having beautiful interiors on the top trims for around 60 grand. And they're still built in Japan, which have some of the best build quality uh, in the world. My friend, David Chow, like shook down the CX-90. He's like, this is one of the best built vehicles I've ever seen. Uh, so that's very impressive, at least when it comes to panel gaps, a body alignment, et cetera. All right. So Mazda CX-90 going to be possibly a thorn in the side of the Lexus TX as well as the Grand Highlander. 
Here we have the Volvo XC90 Recharge. I adore this vehicle. It's just a little small, and that's where the, the TX will have the advantage. Uh, the, the XC90 is super fast. 455 horsepower, it'll do zero to 60 in the mid fours. It is so fast. Battery size is a little bit bigger, almost 19 kilowatts. You'll have electric range around 35 miles. I'm trying to remember what I got. I think I got around 40 miles of electric range, uh, maybe more. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, and it does have an eight speed auto, unlike this setup, which will use the traditional Toyota eCVT hybrid. It won't use the six speed that the 500 HCs, for example. And this eight speed auto is sourced from Aishin, which is Toyota's main transmission supplier, which also supplies the eight speed auto to the base TX, for example, the TX350. Where the TX will have the advantage over the XC90, for example, from Volvo, is room as well as electric propulsion. So uh, the past year, Volvo beefed up the electric motor as well as the battery to make this a more enticing plug-in hybrid. But Lexus is coming, and then, like I said, they'll have around 250 horsepower, which is a whole hundred horsepower more than what we see in the Volvo XC90 on full electric mode. So apples to apples, electric to electric, the TX will be a much more uh, exciting and fun vehicle to drive than the XC90 Recharge. But when you add in gasoline propulsion, the XC90 Recharge will have the advantage there. Mazda CX-90 will have the bargain advantage because you can get those plug-in hybrids for the XC90 or CX-90. I know it's just like the same thing as XC-90 from Volvo is it CX-90 from Mazda. Quick time out. I uh, just looked up the CX-90. They didn't sell any last month according to their sales report, but looking across the nation, uh, looks like they're getting some in allocation. Now look at all the pictures, right? They're, they're not actual pictures. They're all digital, but that means they're incoming. So we have a slew of CX-90s on their way to America, uh, 218. If I look in my specific area, around 150 miles where I live, there are actually some, all right? There are some coming. They're all in the top trim, the premium plus. Well, this one's premium. Look, $53,000. So they're coming and they're gonna be priced very aggressively for the luxury performance uh, and build quality that they offer. All right, let's get back to prep. All right, let's get back to Kirk in the past. Very exciting to have competition out there. It's great to have Lexus finally having a three row crossover, multiple powertrains. Wish it had the 350H op as an option just to keep prices down to get, get that great fuel economy as well. But maybe, maybe eventually that they, they will offer because you know they can. But I got to cut it off there. Thank you guys for watching. I'm a little sweaty, very excited. Have a great day. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe because I will be debuting not only the TX for you, but probably the GX uh, this summer. I don't have like official confirmation from Lexus. I just know that there are events coming up this summer that I will be attending. I can't say exactly when, but it should be soon. You won't have to wait long. It'll be this summer. I'll reveal the TX and other exciting Lexus products for you here on the channel and maybe even more than once, meaning I might have hands-on uh, at two different events with the TX and maybe a Lexus uh, redesigned GX as well. Can't wait. I'm bubbling. I'm boiling. I'm super excited. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day and peace.